Finance Committee. Uh, we are going to, uh, well, let's do the minutes first. I hope everybody got a copy of the minutes, and if so, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Move to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Turnigan. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Baum. It's going to be a long night if it takes that long to approve the minutes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ocean passes. Uh, we've got to going to change thing up, things up just a little bit. The sheriff has got to be somewhere in a little while, so we're going to move him up to the first of the agenda. Do that as quickly as possible. And I don't think we made the general session people very happy, but we'll be back to you guys as soon as we get through here. Welcome, Mr. Sheriff. Thank you. Doing all right, though? As far as I know, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Okay. It'll be on pages 27 and 28 behind the pink tab. Okay. All right. The, the first one is the Sheriff's Department Budget 54110. And the mayor's recommendation is this, and I'll give you some explanation after that's where I catch my breath here. Uh, it's $23,484,831. And you can see that's about a 2% increase from the current year. And we'll make just a few uh, few comments here. If you start at the very top of that page and look at the uh, line items 101 starting there, there's really not any significant change at all except until we get down to line item 148. All right, 148 is is our dispatchers and radio operators. So they had asked for, I think, five additional people there. And I have done my, my homework and review of this. And here's what I've uh, recommended. They do need some help, I think. I think it's, it's pretty obvious. Instead of the five positions, full-time positions, I'm suggesting that they start with two full-time positions. That's in line item 148. And in line item 169, there are four part-time positions that give them roughly enough part-time there to put four people at 20 hours a week, I believe. And I am hopeful that they will be able to use this and maybe it'll be a little bit similar if if they can work this out, that's up to them, I think, to try and see. A little bit similar to what we do with the ambulance service on PRN. They can get some people that are trained or retired or maybe want to work two jobs some and get them a list of folks that are available for call-in when they have absences for all kinds of various reasons. So that was my fundamental logic right there, to see if they can uh, maybe work that, make that work and then get them a pool of PRN and part-time people there that they can call uh, as they need them, and they do need them, it's no question about it. Okay. Um, so that's how many new part-time? It's two, it's two new full-time full -time and four, four part-time. Part okay, and then um, all of these things that we're talking about here has some potential for reducing our overtime as well. I think so. I haven't projected any savings there, but that that might be an outcome that we would hope for. Then if you go down to 189 into other salaries and wages, and that, uh, that is where they ask for 10 new patrol officers. And I have done a more work on, on this review than I did even on the communication position. But in any event, they had asked for 10 new patrol officers, and I have recommended five new patrol officers. I will give you a bit of my analysis. Uh, they have, and this counts everybody, except the uh, their commander, whatever they call the chief person, and their captain. They have 71 positions that are in patrol. Now they do have some other positions that take care of interstate crime <coughs> enforcement and a little special team of active crime enforcement, but not counting those folks, they've got 71 
positions. And they're working 10 hour shifts. Working 10 hour shifts, it takes 5.25 people per zone. They got nine zones. So you're used up 47 of your positions and nobody's had a day off or anything else yet. And when you then do your homework on holidays, annual leave, sick leave, FMLA, an estimate on that, and training, and I might have even been low on training. I only gave them a half a day a month, which is six days a year. It may be more than that. It's more than that. In any event, if you add up all of those items, that's um, five days a month, you might say, per person. It's amazing how much this time off adds up in all of our departments. Uh, so just to backfill, the time off for all of these benefits and sick, et cetera, it takes 16 positions just to be able to back. Either you fill them with positions or you fill it with over, use, use overtime to cover that. And you know how big this overtime is. You'll see that number down here. It's, well, I think we've got a budget item right here on this particular one for $915,000. <clears> okay, saying all that to say, when we take those uh, 47 positions plus 16, that's, it takes 63 positions just to cover, and we've got 71, so at least gives us eight additional positions. And they want to have two teams, you might say, in backup for serious difficulties or whatever, or for some unexpected <coughs> person not being available. So they'd like to have at least two backup teams. They've really got enough for about one backup team, but to really have two, in my judgment, uh, that's the reason I've added these five positions. They can staff, and then they can staff all of this um, time that's going to be off, and that's going to reduce again, I hope. We haven't reflected that in a budget change, but I hope we can see some improvement in our ability to not have to pay as much out in overtime. And that's the reason I've uh, made this recommendation. So I don't think it's any stretch to say that this is not going to give them an overabundance. Let me make one other point there. <coughs> this assumes within each shift, They've got a lieutenant, and then they've got multiple sergeants. They've got four sergeants. They've got three corporals, which are primarily used for training, and 15 deputies in the first <coughs> shift and 17 on the next two shifts. It takes every one of those persons in a car, and I'm not sure they're all in a car, to make this work even and have these two backups. If they're not, if these lieutenants and sergeants and corporals are not in there, this is still not enough. They, Regardless of rank, they have to be on patrol to be able to staff these nine zones and to have a couple of backup. So that's sort of my overview. And uh, I haven't consulted with the sheriff or Captain Smith, but he did give me the numbers on, on who's on their uh, time sheets, you might say, and how many people they got in each position. So I think that's a fair statement of their situation. So. That's my recommendation. You can ask questions now or later on that piece of it. On the dispatch, you're asking for two full-time and then four part-time at 20 hours per week. Yes, sir. Did you look at the difference? I, I, I know the cost would be if, if you hire two more full-time, which would still do the same hours, you then pay be paying benefits. Yes, sir. And health so, insurance in particular. Right. So what's the difference, cost difference between the benefits? Uh, well, just, just an estimate. There. Well, twenty percent <coughs> for just the retirement and FICA. Well, retirement because FICA is going to be either one. And then our health is about thirteen thousand dollars. Is what we usually estimate for a new position. So twenty six for health plus. Yeah, about 12%. I believe Sonia said yesterday it was 38%. Whatever the salary is, it's 38% more for the benefit package. Okay. And I think it would be, yeah, I think it would really be uh, interesting, and I hope they will agree, that uh, if we could start <coughs> to do some PRN on, on some of these things like that, it, it would be a, 
a real benefit to us if, if that works. Well, there and there may be some older uh, dispatch people there that would like to go to a part time. I don't yeah, know. Possibly. You know, but I, just looking at you know what he's asking for five and we're giving him, we're basically giving him four for the look, So four less the benefits that uh, we would yeah. take for that, which is almost another person at least when you add up the benefits. And we don't run into problems, what is it, ACA, that we'd run into we problems? We just have to pitch 30 <coughs> hours and so we're right okay. at it. So we're right there. All right. Oh. Okay, those 11 people with the benefits add up to about a half a million dollars, roughly? Mm. Not, I mean, this Let's is see. She has no here. Yeah. Yeah. Two twenty trolls and fifty five something. Two seventy five plus another hundred, three seventy five plus seventy about four hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. Explain to me. You've told us that we have four hundred and seventeen full time out there. Okay, which is larger than more than any county, roughly our size or slightly larger by far. From what they say. So it's who's they? Uh, Montgomery, Sumner, Hamilton, and uh, Williamson. There, uh, Hamilton's the nearest one in people to us, and they have eight, two, three hundred and twenty-eight. Mm -hmm. So what do we have? What are we doing that is different than those uh, counties? I Our detectives mainly they don't. From the way I understand, we have more domestics than they do. Uh, we have more call volume, according to the sheriff. Uh, our guys, we're just getting more call volume than they are. <coughs> you might have roughly. Are you, are you I was just going to say roughly twenty to twenty-five percent more. Is what you say? That Hamilton. That's down. according to him. You know, but I know with their domestics. They they don't do work as many domestics as we work, and I don't think they have as many mental health transports either. Kind of a, uh, I, I can't recall if they're the ones where the city kind of helps them out a little bit with that. Since I got Mox and Ben right there, uh, I can't I don't recall. Thanks, Kathleen. Do you have a question? Yeah, you you might have answered this, but I'm, we're adding. You're recommending adding the positions plus the part-time, but we're still increasing the overtime from 845000 to 915000 There is money. This, that is reflective in monies coming from the drug fund. That increase is money coming from the drug fund to pay for the overtime for those guys. That's the increase. So you will see, well, you don't see it here, but in the revenue, there's a revenue source. You'll see it when we get to the drug fund, a transfer out that will come in here and pay for the overtime, the additional And it can only pay for overtime? Well, that's what it's, it's what it's budget, that's what we're budgeting it for, that purpose. <coughs> but if we're long on money it, in that line item at the end of the year, we could transfer that out to other uses, can we not? Once it gets over here, we can. Why has yeah. it got to go to overtime? Why can't it go to I mean, maybe this is a dumb question, but why can't it be used to fund these additional positions instead of a funding overtime? Well, that's a long oh, history. Yeah, that's a long we, history we of positions being in there. Mm -hmm. No. Um, we mm -hmm. used to have positions We used in to that. fund positions. And that. You're getting out of them two years ago. Yeah, yes. we just got rid of that, and I worked, we, me and the mayor worked together for Almost three I can years. See where, I, I can see where you're going with that. But this that. is the okay. follow-up, is that here's the, to pay for the overtime for those guys that did move into the general fund. Okay. The other question I had was you had came up with the number of officers per the zone. Where did that number come from? They're on 10-hour shifts. Okay. Which, would be, which means they got to have three people on for every day to, to for a car. All right. They're on four days and all three. So... And so the three is out of seven. It's it's three fourths. So it takes one point seven five times three to cover twenty four seven for one zone. 
And they just recently, you just recently went to 10 hours. We went long. back to 10 hours. We were on 12 hours, and uh, I allowed the, the deputies to vote, and they voted to go back to 10s from 12s. And the big thing was fatigue. Uh, they all talked, they, they really liked the hours, but they, they just kept talking about fatigue because the other thing is you're not taking into consideration, yeah, these guys patrol the streets, but also when they make an arrest, they have to go to court. And most of the time, that's on their day off. So if you give them, if they put them, if we put them on eights, and then they spend one day in court, then they're only going to get one day off. Or they're going to be going to court when they should be patrolling the zone. And as the judges sit here, sometimes it takes a while to go through the court process and, you know, and hanging out at the courthouse. We had asked for the staffing formula for you to look and see what it would cost, or, you know, what the, how the numbers would flesh out if we went to the eight-hour shifts. Were you able to do that? We're not done with it yet. But one thing, too, I'll also say, according to your county handbook, it does allow the elected officials to choose oh, yeah. between eight or ten hours. Yeah, but we, but just yes, trying to be good stewards of the money. That's I'm it. still yeah. trying to get it for you, and as soon as I get it, Either I'll personally bring it to your house okay. or I'll mail it to you. One way or the other, we'll get it to you as soon as we get it done. Okay. I've been told yeah. that flat money-wise, 12 hours is the cheapest one, but you've got the other factors that go yes. in at eight the most expensive. Yeah. Wow. yeah. It takes fewer people to staff eight hours. You have some, but then you got all these other factors that have to take into But you might have to add to cover for the court days and things like that. Yeah. So they work a 12-hour shift and they're making a risk of 11 and a half hours yeah, in. Yeah, and that's what... They've got to go through the process and they're there 14, 14 16 hours. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what was kind of happening. Yeah. You know, either that or you get that wreck on the interstate, you got a, a five-car yeah. pileup, and it was, you know, you're nine hours <coughs> in and that, or 12-hour shift, or, you know. Do you have much shift overlap in that 10-hour? Like, does your next shift come in exactly at hour 10, or do they come in at hour 8 or 9? So yeah, there, overlap. there's overlap. There's quite a bit of overlap. There's between day shift and second shift, there's one hour overlap. Between second shift and third shift, there's four hour overlap. That's the busy, busy time from 1 a.m. to 9 p.m. There's a four hour overlap, which uh, again gives them more, more, more cars on the ground. Five to one is a huge busy time. Okay. It calms down about 10 o'clock, but they're still from 10 to one is still pretty busy. So they are better equipped in that overlap period, no yes. question about it. Another question about um, item 169. The thing I'm going to ask about is crossing guards. Do we really have crossing guards or do we have traffic patrol? If you look around the county at them, it seems to me there's not very many, quote, kids that are crossing the streets, even in the cities that I've seen. They're traffic control. Okay. Are we? I guess my point is, on that, out on uh, 231, you know, going in, uh, we've got the signs and all that, but I don't think there's very many kids that are crossing the street for two, uh, two uh, 231 to get across. But I'll grant you, I would hate to get in and out of there every day. <laughs> but uh, but uh, uh, there's not too many houses in there. But there's a lot more cars. <coughs> I'm wondering if, if we have, if we need all the, quote, crossing guards that we have, that's my point. We've well, never done a study on it to even look and see. I what travel Thompson Lane all the time, and there's four crossing guards between the city and the county, and you'd have major gridlock trying to get buses in and out of there and traveling out. There are some kids cross over to the apartments down there, but you, got, you can't get the cars out of there mm -hmm. if, you, if you don't have somebody. Well, it's like I travel Nissan in the morning, you know, and there are kids who walk across the four lanes traffic trying to get into school. So, yeah, they have they have to be there. Do y'all recall how many years it's been since we've hired new patrol officers? We haven't hired any since I've been here. Four out of six. Two thousand six was the last time that we could find on the budget numbers, and those were grants. Yeah, there was a grant, like yeah. a three-year grant that phased yeah. them in. Yeah, I was actually part of those grants. When I left out of the jail with the patrol. Yeah. Okay. Back side of this page. The, re the rest of that page, you can look down there and see that I've made a few <coughs> arbitrary changes to him. And um, for example, uh, data processing services, I've 
about that $23,000. Item 336, it's down 14,000. Postal charge is 3,000, so there, there are a few smaller changes as you go through there. And the same thing will be on, true on the next page. Um, <coughs> 349 printing, $3,000 less. Um, the gasoline, that's a number that they had already changed uh, previously. Uh, but public safety change. At public safety, they changed that then, okay. Or public safety changed that for you then, okay. So, yeah, they changed it. I agree it. with them. But just to note, since that day, gas has gone up every day. Just want to throw that out there. Okay. Um, there are a few other minor changes as we go down through there. Communication equipment is down 55,000. Data processing equipment is down a whole bunch, 732,000, I think. In my judgment, and I'm that uh, what we've done there, that's the next big piece of their <coughs> records management software. And I have just made a suggestion that I think it'd be better for us to get under our belt completely and successfully the conversion of the CAD system. And then we'll see how that goes. And then maybe if things really go well, maybe this could be discussed even later in the fiscal year. But right now, if we put it in here, we have to fund it. So I didn't put it in here for a recommendation. Law enforcement equipment, I've made, a, uh, again, another recommendation of $130,000 or so to reduce that. On these motor vehicles, they originally asked for, I don't know about that million nine. Oh, okay, the million nine would be a million five plus enough money to fund 10 more uh, patrol officers. What you have in my recommendation is a million dollars plus some vehicles for the five patrol people that I recommend. <coughs> and then a, a couple of um, small reductions in 719 and 790. Uh, cars are, are we doing? <coughs> one million plus five okay. more vehicles, which is 221,000. Okay. That's one. Make sure. Okay. So that's what 18, 19 vehicles to start with plus five. So we're talking. I think each vehicle is about 40 something thousand dollars, I believe. 43,000. We're yeah. talking 44,000. So. so then and that's build out. That's yeah. not just the car. That's, yeah. that's uh, build out. All the other equipment that goes with it. So 221 is five times 43 or 44, whatever it is. And, uh, but in the million, that's. That's roughly, how many cars is that? Is 20, less than 25. Or something like it's that. about 22 or 3, maybe. Are these the cars or the Tahoe's? Car, there's the, you know, the, the Fords. The Explorer, whatever. Yeah, the uh, Ford Explorer. How big they're gone. All right, that being said, that's what's your main reason for Explorers? More room? Big thing is, as law enforcement, our tools get more. The Crown Vic never changed. Uh, if you see a lot of the Crown Vic's even brand new, as soon as we got through putting all the gear in it, it looked like it was riding on the bumper uh, for all the tools that we have to do our job. Room, uh, the deputies will tell you, actually even Murfreesboro and the Highway Patrol tell you, getting in and out of it, uh, the duty belts on this and that, you're having to pick yourself up and you have a lot of issues getting in and out of the vehicle. Uh, the height on them are a lot better. Plus, they're all-wheel drive. Um, wish we would have had them when I took office because if before I took office, we didn't have really anything in our fleet that was four-wheel drive. I know we don't have it often, but when you know we have bad weather, uh, snow and stuff, we hadn't really hardly anything to get around the county. But we still had to respond and we didn't have spike tires anymore so the all-wheel drive in this past year it, it proved itself of getting around in the county uh, and also uh, in pursuits uh, and wet roads all-wheel drive and that's pretty much the standard now that's going to be going across when it comes to law enforcement is the explorer all-wheel drive Not on that particular budget. So your recommendation is twenty-three million four hundred eighty-four thousand eight hundred thirty-one dollars. Yes, sir. 
Mr. Sheriff, do you accept the mayor's recommendation? I can live with the mayor's recommendation. Right. Debate, discuss, whatever. <laughs> Game on. Lisa, you said we're going to be looking at DEA funding. Um, when are we going to get to the funding sources for some of this <clears throat> to see what it, what's offset? Well, that would be drug, uh, for revenue. Because with this, this only shows expenses. This doesn't show any offsetting revenue. Okay, well. But his drug fund money wouldn't come in as a revenue yeah. source for this. Well, it, yeah, it does. It comes in. Oh, no, we're not bad. Yeah. You'll see it. The last budget. It comes in in. in uh, are you asking to see where it comes in or where it goes out? No, where it, it goes in. It comes into the general fund, and it's going to be under tab yeah. seven or eight. Yeah. Where's my revenue? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be down on the bottom where you see. 49,800 transfers in. And so what, what all is included in that number? Um, an estimate, the two things are in this number. One is the estimate coming from the drug fund to pay that, and then also money's coming from uh, workers' comp fund and insurance fund to help fund risk management budget. Is that that $345,000 mm -hmm. for overtime? That, is that where they moved the revenue to? No, coming from the drug fund, it's a, we've got a, I think, 145000 Yeah, $145,000. Oh, okay. yeah. Where do you see this? I mean, revenue, you got to go behind tab one. <coughs> okay. yeah. Behind tab one. Okay. And it's... What about the tab two? Go past, okay, now it's you're right in front of tab it's the last yeah. page. It's <coughs> the last page. <coughs> right in front of tab two. Yeah. Yeah. All right, keep going. Back. Keep you're right there. Right, right there. The last line. 4,900 transfers line. in. The last transfers line. in. That's there. Okay. <coughs> the mayor's recommendation is about $900,000 more than last year's original budget. I'm reading this correctly. Uh, yeah. Twenty-three four compared to twenty-five. <coughs> and some change. This is the point that I was getting to about the, the revenue sources, and, and I would I'm not asking this question to embarrass you or put you on the spot, but we've heard there are some creative revenue sources that we're not showing have been booked in the general fund, and I just want to know: Are they there? Are we counting for them? Are they? We're not gonna. Have, I just don't know where the money is. Is what I'm saying. I don't know how it's being spent. Okay. When you say cr creative revenue sources, mm -hmm. I think the supposedly there was money that was generated from the um, selling of electronic cigarettes, and that money came in, and it was, <coughs> I'm just looking to see what was booked. That's okay. not trying to embarrass you. I, just, I know people are wondering why are we not asking that question, so I'm just asking it. Okay. Um, revenue coming in from the sheriff's department comes um. in. Um, uh, we had my other book. Commissary, there's 43370. What's the page? I'm on page two. On the revenue. On the revenue. On the revenue. Money's coming there. 4337 is telephone. It's telephone commission, but that, that's what I'm saying. Money from the sheriff's department. 43394. Data, data processing fee, 43395 is one of theirs. 43583, TBI criminal background fee is theirs. Um, I'm looking for commissary. 44131. Oh, I'm just looking at that. Okay, 44131, commissary. And so that would be any revenue that's been booked from those sales. And then there was also a like a rebate relationship, I think you had <laughs> with to set up a technology fund. I'm absolutely not trying yeah, to embarrass you, but just okay. just makes it hard. Okay. And the way that this works, I mean, the, the sheriff's department receives funds no different from the register of deeds, circuit court, county.
County Court Clerk, mm -hmm. they receive funds throughout the month. <coughs> and then at the end of the month, when they close their books, then they turn those funds over to us in one check. And then they list out all these items where they received money. And we're estimating right now for four million sixty-five thousand four hundred twenty-six dollars next year of uh, fees and revenue. Yeah, fees and revenue that the sheriff's office will generate. They do get a lot. I mean, there's a one large revenue item that comes from the state, and that is the housing of inmates, inmates state inmates. We're, we're estimating that that'll bring in about two point seven million dollars. That's four six nine one five on your list. Four six nine one five. The forty four one fifty sale of animals and livestock. What do we sell? Mm -hmm. uh, that's the, the monies that you're getting from Paul's. Yeah, that didn't. Mm -hmm. No, that's not. That's not his. Animal. No, this is the, no. This, 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 this is this yeah. is everybody in the general fund. We're not having any auctions. <laughs> We're not selling goats and chickens. <laughs> Maybe we can get in the car and go see the other counties <laughs> and try to figure it out. Hopefully, I don't, they, you know. hopefully they can tell us something. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've got a, a larger jail yeah. in a lot of other counties too. You know, one and that's that is one thing. Hamilton County only houses pretrial, and I don't remember how big their jail is, but they do not house state inmates, and they do not house uh, convicted misdemeanors. Well, how can they get around that and us not? They contract with CCA uh, for their workhouse and for uh, all their other stuff. They just, the, the sheriff down there just keeps pretrial only. Um, and so therefore his staff is smaller because of that. You know, when you talk about my staff, you're talking total staff. And, you know, the jail has over 150 inmates, or 150 officers. Uh, and they cannot go to the road. They, you know, unless it's an emergency situation. If we have tornadoes or something, we'll pull them out to do traffic control. Um, you know, then you have certified staff, which is your patrol officers on patrol, but you also have your SROs. Um, we used to we had the largest SRO organization in the state. I think I don't know where we are where we're compared to schools. Uh, with other counties, but we you know, we have 53 schools, I believe. 47 or 53? 47? 46. 46. And then we got the high schools all have two SROs in them. Um, so we've got all those officers. So I think really our patrol is our least. It's a lot smaller than probably a lot of other counties. But doesn't it also kind of depend on how much support you get from the city? Like in, in Hamilton County, maybe Chattanooga, the city of Chattanooga is able to provide a different level of, of coverage than Murfreesboro is in Rutherford County. I don't know yeah, if that that's, matters. That's the whole not. thing where it will, you can't compare Rutherford County to, you know, you're always, they're going to be close, but they're still apples and oranges because of just the way that uh, each right. city well, is governed. We're and comparing it's county yeah. size, but if most of the people in Hamilton County live in Chattanooga, but in Rutherford County, Murfreesboro is not as big as Chattanooga, Correct. then there's more people outside of the city. Yeah, you know, our demographics are different, possibly. I, I don't, I can't tell you the answer to all of it. Well, well, I don't need to cut anybody off, but we've got a room full of people yeah. we've got to get to, and yeah. we're not going to get answers about Hamilton County. 
right now. We can, in the last several years, since 2006, we haven't been able to add patrol officers, and I, I think it's something we need to do. I know since 2006, the county's population has gone up a lot, so it's something I'd like to try and do. Now, as we get a further along in the budget process and need to possibly find ways to cut to avoid a tax increase, you can't guarantee what will happen, but for tonight, I'd like to try and make a, a commitment to add these patrol officers, so I'll make a, a motion to a, a approve the mayor's recommendation. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Bond. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Commissioner Turner. And one thing, just for clarification, we can bring this budget back up at any of our meetings between now and when we set the tax rate. So if we come up with some numbers that somebody doesn't like, they say, I want to revisit this. And we can go right back and say, we don't need to five people, let's make it six or let's make it two or whatever. This can be revisited at any time up until when we set the tax rate. I think it's good you make that point because I think several of us are kind of making uh, earmarks on, on items that if we had to cut later later down the road, things that could be candidates. But at, at the moment, this, this budget hasn't gone up by as large a percent as some of the other budgets that we'll be examining are, are being proposed to. And so... Any further discussion? Mr. Kaplan, we decided you weren't your last meeting. I don't believe that we're going to do this by voice vote. And if anybody has any objection, we can always change. So I watched it. Everybody in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Let's do a voice vote. <laughs> 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 Commissioner Allen? No. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner Kaplan? No. Commissioner P? No. Commissioner Schaefer? No. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Hold on. Still fail. Yeah. Three, four, four against. Motion fails. Public safety goal was uh, didn't with you. We went and we sat in on that meeting, so yeah, we yeah, all went. But so we didn't have the mayor's well, recommendation. Yeah, that's right. The it changed. And this has changed since then. Yeah. Public safety meeting again. Fourth month. They already were. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. Well, I, the reason I said no on this, I'm not sure about the deputies right now. I'd be willing to go with the recommendation of the mayor minus the five deputies in the cars, whatever that amount would be for now. And like I said, if we decide we'll add it, we'll add it. But you know, that's what I'm willing to do for tonight. Is that a motion? Yeah, I'll make that a motion. Okay, we have a motion to recommend the mayor's recommendation uh, minus the five new deputies and their equipment and vehicles. And Ms. Dunn will have to get us a number on that. That's the 221800 for the equipment, vehicles and equipment. I'm taking good use of that with yes. work. That takes it down to a million dollars. Yeah. And then it will be several different lines, but all the benefits. with the benefits as well. I'll, I'll I think second we could, his motion. We but could we do, can this do it that way. And, and, and you'll have to generate the exact number for me. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We'll call the roll again on this one. Mr. Allen? No. <coughs> Mr. Baum? Yes. Mr. Jernigan? Yes. Mr. Kaplan? No. Mr. P? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Jordan? Yes. That one's 5-2. That, that one passes. <coughs> I didn't ask the sheriff if he accepted that recommendation, but I think I know what he would say. Mr. Kaplan, you got a question? I, I just wanted to say my reason for voting no at this time is with the current commissary and the current yeah. general fund budget being and under question the way it is right now, I just don't feel comfortable voting for an increase in the current budget we had for the last year. So I just I wanted to explain to you that's that's my position. So there's too many questions there. So well, we'll move on to special patrols, which is at the bottom of that second page. Uh, like Mr. Chairman, I, I think. Maybe you could consider special patrols, traffic control, and administrative sex offender risk. All three of those budgets 
are basically no change. If I don't have any objection, we'll consider all those at once. Mr. Sheriff, are you okay with the mayor's recommendation on those three? We'll live with the mayor's recommendation. I'll make a motion to approve something? the mayor's recommendation. I think Ms. Nolan was about to tell us something. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Well, I was just going to tell you the special patrols is the uh, overtime for Lake Patrol, and there's revenue that offsets the special patrol traffic control. Those are those four lights at Jefferson Pike, McCrary Road, Seminary Road in Smyrna, Las Casas Pike. And then there is some revenue under admin <coughs> um, that, that comes in to help support the admin sex offender registry, which is why it is separated separately so we can sh demonstrate that those revenues are going for this uh, preparation. Sorry to cut you off. That's okay. Please. No, I'm no, sorry. sorry. My motion stands. Motion to approve all three. Need a second. Second. Commissioner Allen. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes. We'll go to the jail. It's under tab. No, it's page 30 and 31. Well, that's page back. Okay, there, there are new, no new employees of any type in this particular budget request or recommendation. So you can, uh, well, I'll just note a few things that have changed. Um, overtime pay is, is up $66,000, and uh, that's how much they're spending this year. So, I mean, so, I mean that's not a, anything. I don't think it's not going to happen. The other thing, if well, I, again, have made a few changes to uh, some of their request numbers. Uh, for example, if you come down to 335, I've reduced that line item by 25,000. Uh, 354 reduced it by 5,000. Now, 399 is other contracted services. That's that's our medical services, our contract for that, and that is going up about 2.5%, I believe. It. So that's a number that's um, really not controllable, but that's that's reasonable. And then if you keep continuing on down, there's a reduction in prisoners' clothing from the, his recommendation. Um, utilities, we've had this discussion with public safety substantially about the meters that were incorrect over many years, and they've now been fixed and repaired, and so our utility costs have gone up. And that's, uh, that's just what they are utility-wise. Building improvements, I've reduced that 30,000. <coughs> Maintenance and equipment, 10,000 reduction. Office equipment, 7,500. They have made a request for a modular building, and I've reduced that to $20,000. And other equipment, a $25,000 reduction. So the recommendation is $15,837,626. Okay. Can we live with that recommendation? I have a question, Mr. Mayor. 732, the building purchases. If a portable classroom costs sixty thousand dollars, just in my simple way of thinking, I think it'd be all or nothing. And if you're not going to fund it, you take it, you zero that line out. There are other buildings available that are not portable classrooms, but portable buildings. I, this has been pointed out to me by others. Uh, in fact, I was told there was one that might have been acceptable. It was on Craigslist or something mm -hmm. like fifteen thousand. So I just think a little shopping might might make this possible. On the line 709 for the data processing, where we're going from 75,000 to 131,000, is that part of the CAD system? Is that creating that? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. That that hardware is over in the We're purchasing that, that piece of equipment this year out of the sheriff's budget, I believe. Is that correct, Mr. Sheriff? I believe so. But what that is is um, 709. That is our DVR replacements. Um, go into the tough books for the towers and the main the biggest thing is the uh, MTI door lock system that we have to if we don't re if that goes down and it they don't make the circuit boards and stuff anymore if that goes down your overtime will probably triple because everything in the jail will have to be keyed it won't be able to be a, electronically controlled and that one is 105,000 
guess it would come under food. And what it is, as I looked at our records, our food skyrocketing. He said, and when I hear the last, I believe he told us last night that the jail had it uh, hit 900 plus over the weekend. Well, I looked at our, uh, the last 10 years worth of inmate population in Rutherford County. And from 6, 7 to 9, 10, we average roughly 200 people at the work site. The rest work to get. From 10, 11 through last year, the highest that we've had at the work center is 183, and it dropped to a low of 150 last year. So I think if we could uh, put some incentive in here to move them over to the work center a little quicker, you know, maybe that would be in food. You know, I, I don't know if that's the answer or not. Or what. There's no incentive there. I mean, we're moving them over as fast as humanly possible. Well, can, I don't understand how we could do it faster before than now. I don't know. Uh, because the population over there, they get around, what, close to 150 <coughs> at there. And it seems to like we keep you. We could get some more misdemeanors because, uh, over there. I know the, you, we yeah. don't get to pick and choose our inmates well, and or their charges, you know. So well, we get them over as fast as humanly possible. Well, the last one of your uh, emails I got was about three weeks ago that showed the, the lists and all the other conversation. It had 153 misdemeanors. Convi uh, convicted misdemeanors in the jail. I know there's trustees and you use some for some things you need. There are several that uh, the workhouse, for whatever their charges or their history, charge history, will not accept. If you would like to be added to the daily email, I'll be glad to add you to the no, daily no, email. I don't want the conversations that. back and forth. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, uh, uh -huh. the mayor and I get it and uh, we have been working on it and you know the mayor has called our people over and sat down and talked to them and I believe he is fully confident that we're trying to get everybody over as fast as possible. In the last two or three months we may, we made substantial progress and we were having difficulties prior to that but I think we're moving in the right direction. In fact we've known from about 110 at one point up to about 100 and Today we probably got 164. We got about nine coming in tomorrow. Well, so we're, we're I, moving in the right direction. I looked at last month's. We heard last night was 150. And so well, so well, that's things are going in. Do you feel it's going to get up somewhere? It's it's moving in the right direction. It's uh, all right. I I tell you them all up here, here is the biggest problem. If all, take all of us in the room have 40 to 50. New people are taken into that uh, jail every day, so they. I mean, it's huge turnover here and huge number of in people coming in. You hire five more deputies, that's going to have any more people arrested. <laughs> 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 have we ever considered trying to look at outsourcing to like a, a corrections corporation? Have we ever even looked at that? It'll cost a whole lot more money than we're spending. I was just curious. I know you said, you know, you and that's what, what we do from time had. to time is we ask or tell or demand that the uh, state take some of their prisoners. Okay. And that has occurred in recent years with some frequency. Of course, that takes the revenue. That takes yeah, revenue away. It pay us what it costs, though, but it does cover some fix. It does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further questions or motions? I just I, I found I just found something interesting when I was looking at this the other day. And it's more so just a point. You know, if you said there's about 900 on an average day, recently. Okay, it's so 8, 850 plus a minus. Yeah. I'm sure it has to do with the revenue per item or anything. But if you have 900 people on your commissary revenue divided by those inmates, about 230 bucks per year, or about you know you're looking at about 19 bucks per month profit or whatever it is but on the telephone it's about 363 dollars per year about 30 bucks a month so they're spending more on the telephone than they're spending on the commissary i think we just need to
push the commissary some more and save ourselves <laughs> on some food, <laughs> keep them off the phones. <laughs> Just a point I wanted to kind of make. So. Because the food is, we, we voted on this when we had the amendment. Mm -hmm. It was a massive amendment. You said a lot of these people are asking for kosher meals and specialty yeah, you get, meals you get now. specialty diets and you know, the Supreme Court has ruled that we have to follow it. What's the process for, is there any process for vetting them for receiving that or is it just hey the guy next to me in the cell got a kosher meal so now I want to be kosher pretty much if you say it then we have to follow it you think that's a large part of the increase in that food budget I don't know if it's a large part but it's you know it's substantial a kosher meal is you know very expensive as uh, Sergeant Lloyd has explained uh, you have you know when you have Ramadan you know when you have other religious things uh, it cost us you know when you have someone who can't have any pork or you know this or that you know you have to <coughs> supplement Get a letter plan a motion a long ways to go <laughs> <coughs> Approve the mayor's recommendation. Second. Mr. Turney, second by Commissioner Ball. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. One no. Motion passes. All right. We're ready for the special purpose of the EA fund under tab 7. Is that correct, Ms. Homer? That is correct. And there's no property tax in this fund. No, and this one, this one we generally come back to. Uh, if you can see on that very front page, we're not showing any revenue or any expenses. Um, we wait till it gets closer to the end to find out what they are not going to spend in their current budget that will roll into the next year. This is the where this is the one that we're not allowed to budget or revenue that you're not don't know you're going to get. So, as you've seen throughout the years, we only recognize and budget appropriate the revenue as it comes in throughout the year. So the one that <coughs> Don't believe we need any action okay. because we'll have to come back to this one again. We're on the drug fund on tab eight. No property tax in this fund either. The estimate is um, four hundred thousand in revenue. Total expenditures of five hundred eighty-nine thousand one sixty are budgeted. Fund balance to this one, at the, and this is on a budgetary basis, is seven hundred thousand um, dollars. We're showing expenses more than appropriations, but there is sufficient fund balance to drive it down to five hundred and eleven thousand. I take it that's your recommendation, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. And you can see on the expense side of it, that's where the transfer of the funds you were talking about earlier. Yes. One hundred forty-five thousand is being transferred out of that fund over to the uh, sheriff's office fund and this revenue. Right. And this amount includes the cost of the benefits that would attach to the okay. time. Make a motion approved. Thank you, Commissioner Jernigan. I'll say. Thank you, Commissioner P. I didn't ask the sheriff, but I take it you can live with the mayor's recommendation. I can live with the mayor's recommendation. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I believe that'll put us through with the sheriff for tonight. Will it not? Yes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, apologize to people at the first of the agenda. You had to wait a little longer than you expected. We got a budget transfer for the general session of court. And then we'll do Ms. Watkins. Do it all right tonight. And then we will go straight to that the general session budget. I have a couple of uh, budget amendments uh, requesting that um, $865 uh, for transfers on travel to dues and membership and $500 uh, transfer from library books to office supplies. Motion to approve the request. Thank you, Mr. Paper. Second by Mr. Kaplan. Standing straight budget transfer. We probably ought to call the wrong one. Any further discussion? Call the roll. Commissioner Allen? Aye. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner Kaplan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. 
on General Sessions Court, $1,515,724, and that's up about $45,000, but I'll give you the synopsis view of that. Look at line item 189, and that's up about $36,000. That's the conversion of a part-time position to a full-time position, and you can notice that the part-time uh, 169 line items down about 25 or six thousand dollars so we're offsetting that with an increase of that thirty six thousand dollars so in addition to that we've got some increase in the insurance uh, 205 line item primarily because of the additional full-time person the rest of the budget is pretty much a continuation budget with a few slight changes that I've made that uh, makes Ms. Watkins nervous, but we'll be okay. <laughs> I don't know who I ask if they accept, if it's the judges or Ms. Watkins, but I think she actually yeah. runs away place over there. No offense. We're, we're, we're you all to. <laughs> Ms. Watkins, do you accept the marriage recommendation? I do. Okay. Any time to vote? Thank you, Mr. Turnigan. Second. Mr. Baum, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. We'll move to circuit court. Uh, Ms. Harrell won't be here tonight. She's home recuperating for surgery. We all want to wish her well. She'll be back soon. We've got Ms. Albertson and Ms. Cooper, I believe. If you want to join us up here? We'll be on page 18. <coughs> All right, the recommendation is $427,100, and uh, this is a fee office, so you don't see any of the personnel costs on here. Uh, I've made a change or two that may or may not be a problem, and we'll address that if it happens to occur, but I've reduced the jury and the witness expense 194 by 10,000, and uh, I've taken $5,000 off of legal services, 10,000 off of office supplies, so there have been those three or four minor changes, and uh, in any event, if it's like any other department, if they need more money, they they will come back and ask for it. We just don't want to appropriate money that we don't necessarily know we're going to spend. What is the money on the labor service that's being spent for? That is, is that your interpreters, and is that one of the line items? One thing you do there, they have to have those for. Mm -hmm. for, the, for the interpreters for. They have to have Hispanic or Laotian or whatever. Yeah. So you had 13000 in it this, this year? Or was that last year? Uh, let me look at that. Let's see. 13576 That was the actual in 2013 14. The current year we spent 165 So far, they asked for 30 and I said, let's just try 25 Explain 599 What is other charges, court costs? That is when um, it's one of those circle things with money. Yeah. That, that when I say that, come I never get it. Money money. Money. Well, it always they, stops. They the got, circle remains broken when it gets to me. They got fees and fines that they are not going to collect. So instead, they just write it off. They'll use this money to show it paid, and then it comes back to the, you know it comes back to us in fees and fines. So when I say circle, I mean we put it in their budget. They can apply to accounts. Am I correct, Donna? So yeah. Yes. And then okay. it gets returned, but it cleans their books up. And most of that's done out of circuit court, I believe. So if I'm not mistaken. Mayor, I apologize if you already answered this question. Line 317. What's the decrease on the data processing services? It decreased by about fifty thousand okay. dollars. They are going to continue with the. Uh, previously uh, installed system to GSA, so that's how much the actual GSA uh, cost will be for the upcoming year. Those are annual bills. Well, that's our maintenance that's fee that we have to pay So it for decreases? Well, because you were kind of double paying. Okay. Yeah, this, this year, this current year, gotcha. has got some of old and some of new in it as well. Okay. Thank you. Any 
you ladies accept the mayor's recommendation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One of resounding yes. <laughs> this is new for us, uh, so. <laughs> we have a motion. Not yet. Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Kaplan. Second. Schaefer, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. One no. Commissioner P. Motion passes. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Circuit Court Judge, Judge Siskin. Yes, sir. Well, Good evening. On page 19. Okay, the recommendation is $270,619. And uh, that really, it's a very much a continuation budget. There are a few little changes just because of employee independent insurance primary, but there are really no changes of any substance here. You accept the mayor's recommendation? Yes, sir. I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Thank you, Commissioner Allen. Sir. Second, Commissioner Jernigan. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank, Thank you very you much. Have a good evening. Get up the court. That's a change. Okay, um, the recommendation is $49,997. I'll give a brief bit of overview, and Mr. Uh, King will probably have to fill in some of the spots if you have questions. But you'll notice in line item 189, there's an increase there. And that's one additional person and that's the position we're calling the Veterans Service Officer. So that increase is about $36,000 or so, I think, for that particular item. So there are fringe benefits that, that go along with that and, and substantial part of the increase in it. The line item 205 on insurance would be because of that one new position there. So past that, there are nominal changes uh, that are in here, but. Pretty much it's a re just a reflection of ongoing uh, operations as they currently are. And Mr. King can tell you that with the uh, veterans treatment court, you might say, there is potential additional revenue that, uh, but we're talking about that as a pilot program. We're not talking about any additional personnel there yet. So. Uh, there will be uh, additional revenue. He knows exactly how that's going to flow, but it's a new process. So if you have questions, and I don't know how much of it can be used to support at this moment, the veteran service officer, if any, quite, uh, he may have a better feel for that than I do. So what's your view of that? The revenue is that we would be getting from a new bill that's just been passed will be much in excess of that, but I don't know how much of that could be applied to this. And when he does need a case manager, et cetera, as we go full-fledged with it, we'll need the revenue that we're going to get, which will pay for that, pay for the uh, treatment court part of the side of it. Yes, sir. And what this is, this is an increase in, the, in our drug fund. Um, typically, it was $75. We receive 70 of that for every conviction, every fine that's processed. Um, Representative White and others passed a legislation for the Veterans Treatment Court to increase that fund by... $55 to 130 So $50 for those counties that operate a veterans treatment court will receive that funding um, specifically for that program. With the veteran service officer having a dual role, we will use the VSO um, as a portion of our case monitor, kind of a case manager. So it's really going to be detailed out as far as how much time we want to allot to that particular program. So if it's a third of his, his or her time, for the veterans treatment court, then a third of that money coming in can be applied for that position. I've also spoken with uh, one of the city mayors and trying to run in with the other city mayors here to see if they would help and fund a portion of the VSO salary. Since the majority of our veterans live in the city, I told them it would be you know, helpful for all of us to combine our resources, pull the money together, so that way the veteran can help in Smyrna one week, one day, in Murfreesboro the next day, Laverne, Eagleville, and the like, so that way we can kind of call share. So that's kind of how we've approached trying to fund this. And 
don't remember the exact numbers, but basically we're one of just a handful or less of counties that don't have a veteran service officer. And we've got more than how many thousand people of veterans in our county? We have 22,000 registered veterans um, in our county. 91 out of 95 counties in the state have a veteran service officer. So um, the Tennessee Veterans uh, State Offices, they've been encouraging us to, for the last two or three years to do this and it's, we think with this opportunity to get at least part of this paid for with these new funds that are coming in, we think it's time for us to step up and help our veterans. <coughs> Any motion to agree to present it? Second. Second. Commissioner Shaver. Any further discussion? Mr. King, I forgot to ask, but I'll take it. You do accept the mayor's recommendation. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Chancery Court. Mr. Bradshaw. Good evening. Good evening. It's 22. Okay, the recommendation is a million one thousand seven hundred and forty three dollars. There's just one thing of significance on here. This is sort of like General Sessions Court with their workload continuing to increase. Um, line item 106, you can note that that's up about $36,000. That's in a part time position that we're converting, recommending that we convert to full time. You can see that the part-time personnel line item 169 has decreased 25,000, so that's $11,000 net increase. And of course, with the full-time position, that has had an impact on uh, the 205 insurance uh, line item. So, past that line item, the rest of it, my recommendation is pretty much the same as his, and it's, it's a continuation budget. So, the total budget's up about 25 or 6 thousand dollars. Perhaps you accept the mayor's recommendation. Yes, sir, I do. Just curious, why was the mayor's recommendation two thousand dollars more on the deputy than what he proposed? That when Mrs. Uh, Nolan and Ms. Stevenson decided where that person should be placed on the pay table, that's what it took. They have changed. Okay. What was that two thousand dollars that put us right over that million dollar mark? <laughs> 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 Something <laughs> mental <laughs> happens if you keep the budget under a million. <laughs> Three or four years later. Uh, She's I don't remember that. You find $744 somewhere. That puts you at $999. Yeah. Okay. Just a question, uh, Mr. Bradshaw. You've requested this for a while. You've been working on this for a while. Yes, sir. It's been 11 years since we've added a full time position. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, make a motion to approve the mayor's recommendation. Thank you, Commissioner Schaefer. Second. Thank you, Mr. Bob. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much, Mr. Craig. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Juvenile Court. Judge Devin Court. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you. Twenty-three. Okay. This would be happy as evening as the others. <laughs> I don't know if you know what she <laughs> All right. Uh, I didn't approve her full-time position. She wanted another judicial commissioner there, and I've only given, only recommended an additional twelve thousand dollars for part-time, so that it can see if they can make that work with the support they have out of juvenile uh, detention for judicial commissioner. So this will give them a bit more, but not what she asked for. So uh, the rest of this, uh, this decrease in the actual in her request on the insurance is pretty much reflected in not that full-time uh, position recommendation and just looking down through here uh, well I, we had to add 317 that money because we didn't have the money down to support her use of the uh, system that, we, that the clerk has in place so that's uh, and other contracted services, she wanted more money there, but we just split the difference with her on our recommendation. That's about the end of that story. The rest of it is pretty much the same. $548,374. Mr. Davenport, do you agree with the mayor's recommendation? Absolutely. Think we can get by on that? We're going to try it, and as we grow, we're going to grow. We're going to take baby steps with that new position. 
Like Mr. Like Mr. Bratcher, right? Eleven years. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Hope. Hope you pass. Thank you, ma'am. Thank uh, you. Let me ask just a moment. Lisa, this is Why do we need to do that? Do I come at Jennifer on that? This one, this one does not have to go. I, mean, I guess we, we could take it. Mark, you can do it on the fly. Well, I can come back June 4th. It was just in my packet. Yeah, June 4th. That's fine. It was just in my packet. Okay. I wanted to make sure that I comply. Okay. <laughs> Thank y'all very much. District Attorney. Mr. Jones, welcome. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Page 24. Okay, my recommendation is $88,170. And I know this is not what Mr. Jones has requested. Um, he's requested a substantial increase for online item 103. And we don't necessarily disagree that that request is not somewhat reasonable. But until we work through this whole process about how we're going to or what we do as far as changing our pay table and upgrading certain positions that need to be upgraded, uh, I can't recommend this, but this, as we go a bit further into this discussion, not tonight, but you will see another iteration on the request on the salary schedule. And if we, if the commission decides that we're going to implement these changes that we're suggesting, this $60,000 number would go up. But I, I can't put this in the recommendation yet because it's a part of a much, much bigger piece of discussion. Are you talking about in this budget year, Mayor? Yes. Yeah. You know, you remember Ms. Nolan told you before, if you implemented the first iteration on our pay plan, it would take $2 million more. Uh, we're working on some alternatives to that presentation. And until we decide what that is, or if you decide that we do anything further, we won't be able to do anything on this until we make the, the fundamental changes to the plan. When you said the 60 goes up, it would go up to the 73. That I, don't that's know. Beyond. I, I don't know how much, but it would go up. We, we know that this position has been identified as one that needs to be changed. Okay. John, can you leave with the mayor's recommendation? We'll find a way to make it work. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jernigan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kaplan. Of course, we'll come back and adjust these numbers if one. We have finalized the pay plan. We would adjust the numbers in a lot of the budgets, yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Public you. Defender, Mr. Melton. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Okay, this is a reduction in the recommendation $65,122, and I don't know exactly what the reason was that Ms. Nolan uh, probably that, can tell us on that insurance. Well, he, you know, we always budget for an average, and then when the person does come in, we budget what they pay. So, so that's the difference. So, okay. Yeah, otherwise, there are no changes there. Melton, are you okay with the mayor's recommendation? I am. Thank you. Can I have a motion or discussion? Motion to approve is presented. Thank Second. you, Commissioner Allen. Second, Commissioner P. Any further discussion? I just want to say thank you. Uh, I know you could ask for a lot more money and receive it, and I appreciate you working within the uh, with the amounts that we've been giving you over the years, and it's, it's heartfelt appreciation for me. So I, I appreciate that, and you know we certainly do do what we can to, to help and, and try to do that. And um, at some point in time, as I said here, looking to, listening to the sheriff's overtime and things of this nature, and uh, I may sit down. I've never done this with the mayor. And, <laughs> And, and explore perhaps ways that we might can uh, help alleviate overtime item in the sheriff's budget by perhaps um, looking at some extra general sessions court resources for the public defender's office. I, I think there's, when I talk with the judges, particularly on days when they have long docket days, they, they indicate if, if, that if I had more help to send them, they could move things further along. And at some point in time, we might crunch some numbers and see if somehow or another uh, Robin Peter to pay Paul is, is, is 
is a budgetary move to make, but that's not on the table tonight. But, okay. but one of those things that I, I'm always thinking about in terms of, of what we can do to help everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Make a uh, motion to approve. Uh, oh, we've got a motion and a second. Oh, we do? Yeah. Right. That's right. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Mel. Thank you. Thank you. Youth Services. It's Big B. Well, be on page 25. Okay. Recommendation now is $41,100. There is. This is a continuation budget. She's not asked for anything <coughs> any more than we currently have in place. So uh, okay. there's a little bit of increase not to her making on the insurance line item, and uh, there might be a few other little smaller pieces, but really nothing else of any consequence. $330 increase. Overall. Overall. Ms. Baker, are you okay with the marriage recommendation? I am. Any questions? Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Jernigan. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Schaefer. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Yeah. We've already done traffic control. Uh, Correctional Work Center. Mr. Slandy. Domestic violence. Did you no, miss domestic it? violence. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Domestic violence. Ms. Tillage, I apologize. Page 26. I got okay, it myself. Was, he, was, he was ready to go right there. This, uh, the recommendation is $201,048. And I'll remind all of you that uh, her budget is fully funded out of fees and fines that come through the court process. It is increased a little bit, but we've already done that during mid-year, so you can see that the part-time personnel is down a little, but the other salaries and wages went up because we did convert a part-time position to a full-time position in this current year, current year. and uh, we've had to add the GSA uh, data processing services to line item 317, but the rest of this is pretty much a continuation. Motion to approve. Bill, are you okay with the marriage recommendation? Absolutely. She's got a kid to please. Second. Second. Mr. Pace, thank you, Mr. Kaplan. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion oh. passes. Thank, thank you very you. much. Y'all have a good night. Thank you. I think I can safely ask you to come back again, Mr. <laughs> Correctional Work Center, pages 32 and 33. This one under four million dollars, so that's that means anything to you, all right? Three million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred twenty two dollars, and uh, let's see, there are no new positions. Uh, actually, I haven't marked anything on my report here that <coughs> changes. I think I did reduce that other contracted services by fifty thousand dollars, and a few other one thousand dollar changes as I look down through the line there. A couple thousand dollars on gasoline and no new motor vehicles. Yeah, you increased his overtime pay even more than he asked for. Finance, finance requested that. It, it, um, whenever there is somebody that leaves, and we ran into that. We ran into it last year, we ran into it this year that there's not enough to pay off comp, so it needed to be increased. Okay. Landy, are you okay with the marriage recommendation? Yes. What's that contract with private agencies? Just curious. That, that's, several that's several different things lumped together there. Uh, uh, the ABL? We didn't have it for oh, Wait a minute, see, that, that's a different one. The ABL is down in the other contract in services. 312. Oh, 312. Oh, that's the grant. Yeah. We have a uh, okay. help, a federal grant. Okay. There you go. That we were blessed to receive last year. That's the first time we received it? Yes. We're partnering with Volunteer Behavioral Behavior Services. The Guidance Services. Center. Yes. The Guidance Center, yeah, the original name. It's a reentry program and in house program. Okay. Awesome. Three ninety nine is basically food, right? It's, it's several things food, food medical. medical. Oh. Uh, that's, that's it primarily. It's, bulk of it, yeah. it's got three or four more things, but okay. they're small. Dr. Security. Dr. Security. Dr. Rudd is, is the 
medical, right? Right, right. Okay. And that's a, like a three year contract or something. Yeah, we've, had, we've had it about three years there now. 2012? Yeah, since last year. So, okay. Just so I know, if, if, it's, a, if it's a grant? It's a grant. There's revenue that offsets it. Shouldn't it be in parentheses then? It's 107000 No, the revenue is on another sheet. Oh, oh. Yeah, revenue is on another sheet. This is great expense. Okay. <coughs> Any further discussion? Motion to approve this present. Thank you, Commissioner Allen. Second. Second, Commissioner Jernigan. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Mr. Thank Attention, Mr. Welcome. Thank you. Page 34 and 35. The recommendation is $2,123,271. And uh, I think I pretty much accepted her recommendation, except I uh, reduced OC $399 by $5,000. Uh, other supplies and materials, $3,000. The rest of it is pretty much the same as she's requested. On that 399 we spent 79000 this year and budgeting 72 so what's the difference going to be? What are we giving up? That's our um, 399 mm -hmm. That's our food service contract. Um, and that's going to be population based. So until we need to add more, we can work that in. Ms. Duke, are you okay with the mayor's recommendation? I am. Thank you, Commissioner Jernigan. Second. Second, Commissioner Allen. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Ms. Duke. Thank you. There we go. Fire and Rescue, <coughs> Chief Farley, page 36 37. Okay, this one. Take a little more discussion. We've been flying along. We're going to slow back up here. I think um, the recommendation. I'll just pull the number for the record. It's three million fifty-one thousand five hundred and three dollars. And let me get my hands on some things that I may need. Yeah. Okay. Um, Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. All right. We've had substantial discussion about this business about fire service as we go forward. And uh, one thing this budget request has in it is the, if you'll notice in the line item 718, there's $1,195,000 in motor vehicles. So what we've got in place is a 12 year plan. It's gonna take 12 years for us just to basically replace these engines that are now 20, 25, years, 25 old. years old. So this spreads <coughs> out and it's it's not exactly a million dollars every year, but over that period of time, it's about $14 million we're gonna spend for vehicles and we've got some projection for a couple of uh, building replacements over, over time as well. That would take place. So that's, that one there is the easiest one to explain. So there is a, table that's been shared with public safety and they know about uh, what we're proposing to do on it. Now, reviewing where we are with respect to the, we have two grants. One is simply a grant for a person, one person. And that grant uh, for that particular person, let me see here, that's, that's a request person for recruitment, that goes through 2017. So this next year, that is fully funded at one position. We also have a grant for full-time firefighters, and that, that's, that's 12 positions. Those 12 positions are funded again this projected uh, budget year. The next year, 2017, two only two months. Ten. Ten, only 10 months for next year. Well, we must have made a little bit of a slip up here. So we've got 557 plus 88 over here in 2017. This is, okay. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. So you're telling me there's only 10 months funding this coming year, so um, Right, because it came, we came in May. We started in May. It was May 4th was June. I have three five-year spreadsheets, so we must have made a little mistake on that spreadsheet. So my numbers <coughs> of what we're going to be in shortfall is a little bit understated, all right? So we just have to accept my apologies there. Now, let's talk a little bit about, we have, with Rutherford Fire Rescue, we now have combined together with uh, four stations that used to be volunteer fire departments. Rutherford, Rockvale, Salem, Blackman, and Southeast. And the Rescue Squad. And the Rescue Squad that went with Rutherford Volunteer <coughs> Fire Department. The old original Rutherford. Okay. That means we're, we're left with these volunteer fire departments. Amaville, Kittrell, Walter Hill, Las Casas, Christiana, and Fosterville. And Walter Hill Fire Department wishes to come underneath uh, our consolidated Rutherford County Fire Department, all right? So what we've got here in this budget is a request, a recommendation, that we're going to continue with our grant monies that we have for the first 12 volunteers, which is going to last 10, 10 more months, the payment of that, and then put a full-time day shift Monday through Friday four positions at Walter Hill. The current full-time staffed location is on Old, Old, Old Salem. Barfield Road. Barfield Road, the, the <coughs> southern part of our county. And we want to put another at least Monday through Friday, day shift operation, uh, firefighters in position so that we've got something on the northern part of the county. So we've got a broader range of coverage. You know full well how difficult it is to get from uh, Barfield all the way to the north part of our county would be a, a struggle to go through all that, count, all that traffic. So in the budget, <coughs> which is less than he has asked for, but in the budget request, there are four positions, a lieutenant, two firefighters and one engineer. And um, you can see that under other salaries and wages, he'd ask for 932,000. I'm only recommending $629,000. And that's, that's those four additional positions that would be stationed at Walter Hill so that we'd have good coverage during the daytime hours. And that's, that's the time we're weakest on volunteers being available. All right, so stop me anytime, but this is not all completely uh, choreographed, if you might say. And the insurance that, you know, that all of the, the uh, benefits and the insurance that were reflected in that 932004 uh, I think that request there was for the, that probably was the full. The, the full. The full. Uh, we've applied for a second grant for 12 positions, which we don't have. So I'm just proposing what if we don't get it? This is the fallback request that we would like to pursue. Now, if we get it, then we'll have to come back to the commission and you'll have to decide if we want to accept it because when we accept these grants, they have a future liability. We have to make a decision. When this current grant for 12 people is run out, you have to decide are we going to fund it or not. I mean, it is, and it costs, according to what Lisa has here, $600. $34,000 a, a year to grant this, so that's uh, well, We large. budget around 700000 but we budget at, assuming they're all coming in with five years experience too, yeah, okay. so this is more reflective of what experience they had when they came. So we, we have to project into the future to, when we make these decisions about if we're going to take the grants and, and use them, so. And I think with that second grant, when we talked about if we get that, you, you have to keep the first 12. Yeah, we cannot supplant that. In other words, we can't just get the, the second grant and then say, hey, we're not going to use the first one. They won't let us have the second one because that's, that would be sort of, I guess you could say, gaming the system, and they don't allow that to happen. Would they also say we've got to have hire 12 additional full-time positions in addition to the four you're recommending for the Walter Hill area? We wouldn't do that, no, sir. If we get this grant approved, we will never hire the four, okay? And we may know, hopefully, in time before we make... Uh, an offer to actually hire those four. We'll wait to see the outcome of that grant. 
and then we'll have to make budget changes subject to your approval. If we hire them before the grant comes in, then they can't come on the grant. So right, we, gotta we wait. will wait till we know yes or no whether we got the grant or not. Okay. And this budget, there has been fifty thousand dollars in the budget for Walt Hill. You know, like we we give grants, we have a contract with the, with the other entities that are not part of Rutherford. So he's taken that fifty thousand dollars, and several of these increases through here reflect a reduction in. What line item? Other contracted services. See that 330,000 has dropped to 280, and yes, there is a. Uh, this is the rest of them there. So that 50,000 dollars that we were paying them is spread across utilities, equipment, etc., training gear, etc. Et so that in, that's just part of the process to move. If we actually take them over. We won't be able to take them over unless, unless you guys approve. This is part of the budget approval process. And they wouldn't come aboard until July the 1st, assuming all of this is approved at some point. All right, stop me at any time. Um, if we didn't approve taking them on, do they still have a viable volunteer service there? I, as it's, viable as volunteers it's can be. It's becoming less viable. Uh, the times that they are available is more limited. I think this county is destined for growth. All of us know this, and there's, I think it's a need. I think it's a, our citizens out there in the unincorporated area <coughs> really deserve this. And I believe with the annexation laws that they've uh, put in place in Nashville, the only annexation that will take place are by those owners that request it. So we're likely to continue to grow out there even maybe more than we have even in recent years. To give you an idea, in 2010, when the mayor consolidated the two fire departments, countywide we ran 1,300 calls. This last year we ran 2,700 calls. So just to give you an idea, we last year from January to December, we, did, we had 81 structure fires and we ran 685 NBAs. Mike Nunney said here last night and told folks say that, that their call volume has gone up 50% on motor vehicle accidents. Well, everything in the county, we have to cover that. We cover the interstate, we cover 96 east and west, 231 north and south, Bradable Pike, all, all your main thoroughfares, thoroughfares out in the county. And we've, we've distributed this motor vehicle accident response to Rutherford, the Rutherford group has its plus Amabile, uh, Las Casas, no, Amberville, Walter Hill, and Kittville. So we, we do have those other uh, entities helping us with that motor vehicle uh, but response. If, and and Walter Hill's had struggled lately to have daytime coverage, and it's 30 minutes from our side of the county to Walter Hill. If they're not covered, then our truck rolls from Barfield out there, and that's 30 more minutes or 20 more minutes that somebody's trapped in a vehicle. You're more likely to be trapped in a vehicle than you are to have a structure fire based on our call volume. I mean, you figure 685 wrecks out in the county. Do you only dispatch on severe accidents or are you automatically dispatch on every accident? If the call comes in as a MVA with injuries, okay. we're dispatched. Now, if the call comes in, hey, we've had a little fender bender, okay. you know, then we don't. And it's based on the information that dispatcher collects during that call. Okay. Who has a sort of team that can go with for the motor vehicle? They, they are a high technical rescue team, and most of what they are, will roll on are the uh, buses, and semis, big, they're heavy rescue. They wouldn't go to a motor vehicle? They could, they, they could. But like they're also doing rope rescue, trench, cave, swift water. Uh, <coughs> The uh, dive recovery. I mean, there's there's a lot more vast things they do, but, but education is part of their what they their capabilities. <clears throat> Mayor, earlier you recommended five new patrol deputies for the sheriff, and this committee turned that down. And here, this budget is is asking is pr proposing four new full time positions for the Walter Hill area. Can you give us your your opinion on which set of positions is? more needed the four 
for, for the firefighters for the Walton Hill area, or the patrol deputies for the sheriff? Well, we, I don't know. We only have one station with that staff 24 7. There's four guys at that station every There's day. Four guys at that station all the time. That's <coughs> on the Barfield Road, uh, Rutherford County Fire Rescue Station. That's pretty limited coverage for all of the unincorporated area. It's still a huge area. And uh, I know it's hard to say which one is more important. Depends on whose life is at risk, I guess. But we don't have any coverage. <coughs> and we're not even asking for 24-7 coverage at Walt Hill. We're just asking for Monday through Friday, one shift, day shift. So to give you an idea, paint you a picture, we had a structure fire on the north end of the county one day. And when I arrived on the scene, I had a fire coming out the side window and the front window. I had a truck from Las Casas and a 70-year-old man driving it. I had another truck from Kittrell. I had a 75-year-old man on that truck and the driver. And that's all I had. And thank goodness our barfield our station rolled up, got two guys dropped off here, they went in the front door and knocked the fire out. Uh, Kittrell's guy was doing a great job in the back. He didn't go in by himself because he, He's not supposed to, but he knocked the fire down enough that my guys could go in the front door and put the fire out and we laid out to a hydrant. So, I mean, you're talking about a skeleton crew. We're operating with a skeleton crew. Speaking as a commissioner from a rural district on the north end of the county, <laughs> I'd rather okay. see these four than the extra four or five deputies myself. Yeah. We're too progressive, in my opinion, we're too progressive of a county to not be working our way toward a full-time fire department. Yeah. Well, and, and Mayor, I, I don't want your point to go unnoticed because I think you're exactly on point about the changes with the annexation laws. I mean, the urban growth boundaries are, at this point are, in my mind are basically irrelevant because everything that's not annexed is going to stay not annexed for the most part. I mean, there'll, have, there'll be some, but not with the same growth that we've seen in the past. So this is, you're going to see more development in the county and it's just, it's going to be a byproduct of our growth. And I've been in the county fire service for 25 years. Back when I was a volunteer chief, I had farmers and off-duty uh, firefighters for the city, but they've expanded their spe special operations, so those guys are training on the days off. You don't have farmers out there. Uh, we're struggling to get people to volunteer sure. because it's such a time commitment. It's such a training <laughs> commitment. Now, the volunteers we do have, they do a tremendous job, and there's a lot of them are very dedicated. And but sometimes don't they use it as a stepping stone to a professional oh, group yes, at another yes. department? And what we've actually yeah. done is uh, the commission, when we passed the grant, we have actually hired those volunteers mm -hmm. out in the county who've got no certifications in, and we, we, we brought them on. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's getting harder to uh, get volunteers. You read all, all of the state of Tennessee where volunteer fire farms are actually shutting down because they can't get people to volunteer. Mm -hmm. And you have a, a young guy that's, that's capable to do that. He's got two kids and playing ball, soccer, and, and with the commitment of working, it's just, it's just becoming tougher. But now we do have some volunteers. I don't foresee us ever going away from the volunteer system, utilizing volunteers for the next 10, 10 years. And my, when, I, when I retire, we'll still have volunteers because we've got to have them. But I think we're at a point where we need to, we need to have some. And, and we talk about ISO, we talk about insurance. But my biggest fear is having a guaranteed response that you know when those tones drop, somebody's coming to you. That's what scares me. Do you think we're inadvertently discouraging volunteering by, by hiring? I mean, it, it kind of seems like we're kind of yes. suggesting you don't need to volunteer anymore. Just don't do it and we'll, we'll have to hire someone. And I think there's some risk there, but I don't know how to balance that. I mean, I really actually. I guess the follow-up to that question is: There's several other volunteer fire departments on this on on one of the pages in the booklet. I'm wondering if they're going to feel like, well, we don't need to volunteer either. We'll just come under the. Well, if they volunteer and get the certifications, all they get so many years, and they've had a good chance of getting one of these jobs. Yeah. That's a lot of them. So, and we so have, we that may be a more reason. How many were hired out of those twelve that you got out of the volunteers? All of them. Every one of them was a volunteer yes, in sir. the county. That was the so rule. That, that was the rule that full commission passed. <coughs> Every one was a volunteer firefighter in this county. Isn't that a thing? I've heard that there were some out of Metro that were hired. Were they not? Probably, 
that group. You know, I've got a guy that works for them, but he was a volunteer in this county. But he, he did work for Metro. Man, he did work for Metro, but he's, he was volunteering in this county. He lives in this county. And another thing is, is these <coughs> tankers and uh, trucks that uh, we're getting, they're, these other five volunteer uh, fire stations are getting their share too, along with it. We're not well, just giving it they'll to all, them. They all have to be replaced. I mean, they, they, the volunteers got trucks, and it's like the kid of chief said in the paper, I can't have enough ham breakfast to buy a new truck. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's fact. And so we've got, we created a C-Task, created a study, the independent of me, <coughs> and they, and the mayor got a copy. I, I think Commissioner P had a copy. We get a public safety copy showing how we would replace those trucks over a 12 year period based on the number of runs, mileage, and stuff like that. But basically, when you talk about, you want to talk about NFPA, um, it, you're, the apparatus must be NFPA, NFPA 1901 compliant and they recommend after 20 years you retire these trucks. So as we have these trucks getting older, out of NFPA compliant, it could hurt, affect our ISO. Plus, as, as we- As long as they still pass under the pump test, so they will be- Not necessary. Not so necessary. Change the, change the rule a lot. Yeah, there's just so much more stuff you couldn't, and I just come from an ISO class uh, a couple weeks ago, and there, there's a lot of things changing. You know, uh, we have some fast nines in the county, and uh, water supply is 40% of that. Whereas well, we buy these new tankers, that's going to be a, a, a way that we can help lower that that high rate. Basically, if, we can, if I can get enough tankers and we can prove to ISO that I can go out in the county where there's not hydrants and provide a water supply of 250 gallons a minute for two hours, then they can, if there's a class five, then they get a class five whether they got a hydrant or not. But we've got to have this water supply in place to do that. Those tankers will help provide that. To help our insurance rating when we go from volunteers to more full time? Yes, uh, ISO credits uh, every paid person one for one. You have to have three volunteers to get credit for one person. Oh, it was four. They changed that too. Yeah. That's good. And then two, they recommend uh, the, 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 the Department of Deployment Analysis is 10 points, is a, is a major change they've done, and it, a lot of that requires. Uh, Fire engine arriving on the scene within 5.3 minutes from time of dispatch. So as you know, as you know, if anything about fire, you know the more time the fire has to burn, the bigger it grows, the more it destroys. It's got to be a big deal. Mm -hmm. Insurance rates and ISO rates. Mm -hmm. Ten years ago, you didn't see that big of a thing, but ask the people out Franklin Road. Royal well, Glen, uh, uh, Royal Glen Subdivision, uh, when Salem Black Blackman lost their station on 96 and moved to Old Salem, it took Royal and Subdivision out of the five miles. <clears throat> Those houses are probably 350, worth 350,000. They're in, I got calls, they blew my phone up. Their insurance went from $1,200 a year to $3,500 a year. Um, I got with the mayor and told the mayor, I said, I got a cheap fix for this. I said, we can put a fire engine into the sort building on Fortress Boulevard where special operations runs. That puts them into five miles. By doing that one thing, we dropped their insurance from a 10 back to a five because they had the hydrants. So we were able to readjust that and save that. And that was costing some households over $2,000 a year in additional. It was 35, yeah, they went up, they tripled. So if we ever get around to talking about a fire tax, which may not be this year, but we can, that's gonna cost somebody $75 a year or something, that's a pretty good offset to a couple thousand dollars on your insurance. Well, as long as they brought it up, and where's uh, the four additional say? Say that's what we get. First of July, that money, and then the twelve hundred, uh, one point two million for the two trucks. So where is it going to come? Okay, this is the rest of the story. We've done these five-year projections, but just these—it's not quite as bad because the first five-year projection had an assistant chief and four other people, and I'm not the assistant chief's not in this recommendation, so the numbers are not quite as bad. But over a five-year projection to buy the equipment and to fund this and to take care of the current uh, grant that's going to expire. Next year, we need $780,000, more than we have in revenue. Next year, a million four, 
a million four, seven hundred, a million two. So we need, you know, just say we need a million five or a million, million four would be an easy number for you, okay? Mm -hmm. Because a ten cent fire tax, that uh, one cent in a fire tax in the unincorporated area generates one hundred forty thousand dollars. So if we used straight fire tax and no other options, and there will be some other options that we will talk about as we get further down the road, it would take 10 cents just to support these four people. Now, if we get a second grant and the commission chooses for us to accept this and we want to go forward with our first grant of 12 and the second grant of 12, as we look into the future and project that, the number gets up to about a million eight. So we need about 15 cents up there to accommodate that going forward. So whatever we decide to do, we need to look into the future. And of course, we, this will all be determined whether we get the second uh, grant or not for 12 more positions. That would help us make that decision soon. But uh, And it's still going to take us 12 years just to replace these vehicles. We're going to be 12 years behind <laughs> on the next set of vehicles that are sitting out there that need to be replaced. So They're 25 years old and 15 years old respectively. So we're taking a very, very s slow process in doing that. So we are investigating other opportunities. We're not in a position yet to explore all those with you that might be uh, something we can suggest, but there are a couple of other alternatives that have some potential. Some of them <laughs> need a legal review and we're working on that even as we speak all right so as we get to the point if you do <coughs> recommend these this where we are currently with the four additional people uh, you can you'll make that subject to your decisions about how we actually fund this as we go forward and uh, we for a year or so we could muddle along sort of like we are if we want to but if we're going to get serious about fire protection we ought to develop a plan that's workable as we go into the future. And what we've got happening right now won't work. Um, it won't generate the revenue we need. Yes, yes, we could do some things like divert all of the development tax uh, that we get to the fire process. That means we're short for revenue to support other needs that we've been supporting in county general. So we would push the need for a tax back to somebody else. So you really done nothing there except maybe spread the pain. So if we want the uh, fire service that we're providing to support the unincorporated area, you know, we still sort of need to think about uh, letting them stand on, on their own responsibilities. All that to say, we don't know. Ms. Nolan's got a few other alternatives and we are over the, Within the next week or so, we'll probably have better answers for you on which, what we think is the right approach. Well, let's just say you mentioned 15 cents for the highest site is tax, yes. fire tax, on a $200,000 house, that's $75 a year. Is what it is. So It's $6 a month. So what, but what that can do for your insurance, because we've still got problems with insurance in this county, even these people that are down at five and six. And it appears these, these people these insurance companies are much more assertive and aggressive about yeah. these these ratings. I mean, now, I mean, they're really looking at every individual thing they can to determine what their rates are going to be. And if you don't have people that can, you can count on having somebody to cover during the day, that, that uh, while well, most people are working, you'll see the, the rates so if Well, in the public safety, we had an insurance guy show up and, and you know, pretty much said that a lot of insurance companies only ride a nine or a ten. So it's kind of hard to buy a house if you can't insure it. Yeah, they're having to go to certain companies, and the certain companies are driving the premiums up. That's right. And so, uh, also, by having paid people, which we consider automatic aid, let's say this, this if we had full-time people at Walt Hill or Barfield, and they respond to one of the volunteer fire departments, they can count that as automatic aid those four people and count them as their their response. So it helps them on it helps them on their ISO grading too. ISO is is done change. They're going to start coming and evaluating these fire departments every four years. So you know not only do you have to maintain the records, 
you've got to keep them maintained because you can lose that and it can go up. So, I mean, it's just a lot more involved in it. So, can we ask, what do you need tonight? I'd like to give, I'm recommending that you approve this, this particular budget request here, which includes the four additional people, contingent upon a fair and reasonable resolution and, uh, and decision making by the uh, commission, the full commission, uh, to determine what the appropriate funding mechanism is uh, in the next two or three weeks. And that money is all, that that number is also contingent upon whether we're awarded that grant. Yeah. And because that would back these four employees out, yeah. and they would go into the. They'd, be, the they'd be free for two years. We actually get twelve instead of four. The the funding for this, and, and I don't have a problem with what your plan is. I think it's a good plan. I think it's it actually you need the uh, equipment quicker than any twelve years. Yes, sir. Uh, when we bought this first truck back in ninety one. I believe it's when the first trucks came out. The commission at that time said, well, every 10 years we'll replace them. Well, within that time, we replaced, well, we buried in one truck. And we've had some bad luck with some of those trucks. Uh, a couple of the departments have really had some problems out of that. Those units, I think, last gases in particular, so you know that, that one. But, you know, I'd like to see a more aggressive uh, take on, on getting these equipment. To these guys. I mean, they've been suffering for lack of equipment, and you talk about your ISO rated again, not having the equipment, will come back and bite you just as well as anything else. Actually, like I told the mayor, if we don't, if we talk about the volunteer departments, if we don't buy these volunteer departments engines, we're going to bankrupt them, because a lot of them need, pumps need working on, and there's a great possibility with these trucks, they rub on a fire, and they don't pump. I mean, it's, that's, that they're 25 years old. I mean, anything wears out after a while. You know, Cadillac or Lexus wears out after a while. But, I mean, they're in dire need of, of new apparatus, and, and they don't have the funds. They can't raise the funds to keep these things operational. Well, you know, having, having said that, and, and I don't have a problem with putting manpower in Walter Hill, because if I need you at Kittrell, we're going to jump up and go. I mean, I've, I've been a volunteer at Kittrell, and I fought fire. Laverne, I fought it in Woodbury, I fought it in Wilson County, I fought it in Williamson, well, around the edge of Williamson, I've been to Eagleville. I mean, you, you're volunteering and, and fighting these fires out in the rural areas, you're going to go where you needed to go. And well, that's part of being a volunteer and the satisfaction you get, I have in your community. And there's, there's still a, a good bit of people that, with community pride, that want to volunteer. And I think that whatever we can do to expand those opportunities for them, <coughs> I want us to do. And hiring these people need to be from these volunteers. And I mean, I wouldn't even look at one outside this county, period, until, you know, you exhaust all other resources. And last time I had a count, it was over 300 volunteers. And I'm going to assume that you're listening to that now. Yeah, count. Yeah. And Commissioner, when we, when we, when we sent out, and, and HR came back, when we sent out to hire, all, we, we, we don't post it. We send out to the volunteer chiefs to, to notify their members to post that on their inner stations. And, that's, and I mean, somebody else could comply, but we, when I, we hire them, look at them, we know where they're at. We know what department they're with in this county. Well, I think you ought to take another step. You know what these are going to be. I think you ought to go to these chiefs and these people and say, hey, here's what you got to have if you're going to qualify. And we've done that. And I want, here are the classes. All you got to do is come take them. And we've, uh, we, we, we have those classes. We tell them where they can go study to pass these tests. And, I mean, uh, they call me, and we've told all of them what qualifications you have to have to get, to get hired. Right. And, and they're one of these volunteers we've hired to come, come from inside Rutherford County. They're Rutherford Ruff, County fire, volunteer firefighters. Um, when I say Rutherford County, I'm talking about Wall Hill, all of them. <clears throat> well, the way that we fund or have to fund, can't just take money out of the general fund anywhere, is that correct, Lisa? Right. It has to be from a size tax. So list for me the places we can get funding <coughs> for the fire service. The size tax places in it. And, hotel, uh, hotel, motel. Okay, do it slow because I'm going to write it down. Okay. Sales tax. Okay. Hall income tax. 
bear and make string tags. Is there any place in the county that has milk mixed strings? We're getting eighteen thousand dollars a year from somehow. So. <laughs> <laughs> As our portion. <laughs> Coming from the state. Okay. We got some money from the municipalities. Remember, there was some. Was that just? No, for that's a different. Okay. That's a different tax. Okay. What about the? That, that is kind tax. of a collecting from the municipalities. You missed what was all the string and mission? Oh darn! What was the tax? Did you mention this? How are we tax? No, no, no. Where we bought our first trucks, the development tax. I wasn't aware that was part of it, but well, it is. We have not used any of that heretofore. Right. Well, well, we usually use that for capital items. Capital items in the and you buy into <laughs> trucks with development tax initially. Well, the development tax is basically coming from the, uh, the new homes. The new homes that are built, which which that, some of those could be in the city too. Yes, they are. More of them are because it's all of the homes that are built in single family units, even in the well, I, you know, we, we had a discussion on this, and basically my, my take on that is I, I don't think it's right for the citizens that live in the municipalities that are already paying fire our, our taxes to the municipality for fire service to pay for fire service for the county. So, I mean, I can see the, the use of the fire tax. However, I want to make sure that these status taxes that are out there are not all being used for the Chamber of Commerce or well, whoever it might be. And, and, we're, and not, we're not sharing uh, appropriate amounts of this money toward the fire service. And I assume that's what you were talking about. You would come come back to us with some, if you, you talk to our attorneys, if you can find one. You can <laughs> well, we talk to your attorney and find out where uh, the money is available. I assume that's what you're going to do. What I want to know is, am I going to see this before June 29th? Or I have to. I, I'm not willing to vote for a 15 cent tax increase for rural areas until I see that these side taxes are utilized for fire service, which it should be. All right. And when I, uh, my estimates that I use, <coughs> for example, the hotel motel tax, the estimate for the year is 1.6 million, but 30 percent of it is used for the um, chamber. Chamber CVB Convention Visitor Bureau, and 10% is used for the two city of Murfreesboro to take care of the greenways. So when I look at it, I only look at 60% of what we've been estimated for hotel motel tax. What was the average revenue that came in on that? 1.6 million is what we've got estimated. Mr. Mayor, I'm telling well, you earlier to say that you needed some more time to get all these. Revenue estimates together and decide exactly <coughs> which direction we're going to take. No, as far as that is, yeah. <coughs> well, I have another question along the hotel motel tax. Uh, we're at 2.5, and we can go to 5. Is that correct? Let me say this. This is an extraordinarily complex legal matter. It's been going on since 1983. Uh, yes, we have a private act that says 5% can be collected as a hotel motel tax. In 1983, and, and we agreed that we would take 2.5% of that and the city of Murfreesboro would get 2.5%. That's still in place. That same process is in place. So we are researching all the way back to 1983 what happened, what has happened since then before we can determine if there's more money on the table. So we need another, at least another week or so to determine how much of that is potentially on the table for us, okay? Right. It's and I understand that we have legal agreements. I do know some history of the hotel motel tax. My father, when he was commissioner, yeah, he was, he was, was the one that brought <laughs> up the hotel motel tax. And he told me the reason that he brought it up was to offset property taxes. And he was very disappointed that that never happened, that that money was being spent for well, 60 other percent purpose. Of, <clears throat> but 70%. Uh, it's, well, 40 percent is allocated. 40 percent we get. But that was part of the original 1983 resolution from the Board of Commissioners <coughs> that they distributed that 60% to the uh, 
for those three things she just mentioned, the four things that right, she mentioned. Well, like I said, he was disappointed. I understand. Property tax. But, but we, it did help offset we, property it, tax. It, it has. I mean, it has. 60% of it offsets. I think right now, or tonight, we just need to decide what's your expenditure, and then we're going to get a chance to look at this again when the mayor comes back and tells us exactly where the revenue is going to come from. And, you know, personally, I vote for this tonight, but if you come back with a 15 cent fire tax, is going to have to be implemented. And I'm going to say we've got to start cutting over there, but I'm not personally going to vote for 15 cent tax, fire tax at this point in time. So we'll entertain a motion. Trying to keep them up. We're kind of, we're kind of <laughs> spinning our wheels here a little like bit. Like I said, I don't mind moving this long, but you know, I'm just like Will. I'm not going to vote for a 15 cent tax increase. Not going to happen. We're going to have to find some revenue somewhere that we can we can work with. Or <coughs> I don't mind approving this budget as it is, and then going back and look once we find out the revenue sources that are available to us, and then look at it again from there. I mean. It's, until we have those revenue sources, I don't, I don't think <coughs> any of us are, you know, I don't have a good feeling on it anyway. I don't speak for everybody else. And Will, Will did say he didn't, but. I, I'm, I'm, I'm leery about jumping into a tax for just a rural area, because I just wonder where that leads us. Before long, you're saying, hey, the people in the rural areas use the convenience centers, and the people in the cities mm -hmm. get their garbage picked up, or the people who have kids in school use more taxes than that, so we can have a different rate for them. So I, I want to be caught, tread very lightly where we start picking classes of people to pay for certain things. Right. You know, I mean, who well, gets arrested? You know, tax them extra. Cause they right got now, I'm them. paying a, a dollar per hundred for whatever I get in Laverne, be it a park, be it city police, be it, which I can use the uh, sheriff, or be it fire. Yeah, but I sure don't want to pay for something out in uh, Kittrell. The same thing can be said by somebody who well, doesn't have children. I don't want to pay for what's going toward education. I don't have any kids. So I'm just saying we need to be very careful, in my opinion, how we step off into this. Because we could start having huge tax increases and we're going to have 25 yeah. different tax brackets according, according to what family did what. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'll tell you, too, that you brought up the point earlier, and I wasn't going to say anything, but I see it on a daily basis with our People will come in expecting to buy a home out in Rockvale, and they're expecting a $900 mortgage payment because it's affordable out there. And then they'll come back to me and they're in a nine or a 10 and they say, I can't find insurance. I have to go to so-and-so and it's gonna be $2,900 a month. Well, 2,900 versus 900 a year, divide that by 12, their mortgage payment just went up $225, $250 a month. Mm -hmm. So we need to really kind of balance this. I agree with you, I don't think we should say, hey, you're out there, you need to pay this, but I think there's a way to kind of look at this development tax too, because you know I'm probably gonna get some nasty phone calls about this, but you know there, there's push to develop out towards there because we have the land available and the affordability. I mean, how when it's 500 homes fixing going out on our car exactly out there off Anvil Road, and so you're I mean, gonna have to cover that. You know, and, and the thing about it is uh, the, the fire pick's not gonna get any better unless we move in this direction for our insurance rates. So we, we have to at least maintain uh, the service we currently have and replace this equipment. And we have to find the source or else even the ISO rating of five that we have for our county fire department that is going to. And we dropped that down from an eight, uh, including the Rockville at the Rockville area southeast and Rutherford and same way, dropped that from eight to five. Already so done that. By, by what so if we don't refund the continuation of these 12 people, that'll automatically go back to an eight that we currently have. Well, I don't think we can go any further with this discussion tonight until we see these revenue sources, but I, I'm willing to go ahead and make a, a recommendation or a motion to, to take the mayor's recommendation and I won't caveat right now with revenue sources, but uh, you can look for that when it comes back. So. That's that's a fair approach. I, mean, I agree with well, that. Well, second. Motion to the case. Same by Commissioner Kaplan. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We don't want to talk about this.
You can see that the list of volunteer fire departments that we, we will still have uh, with um, the assumption that we bring Walt, uh, Walt Hill underneath us. And the numbers we have there are the same. And uh, there's, there's $280,000 of what we're recommending that we uh, contract with them or give them as a contribution, you might say, to for them to help defray a small portion of their cost. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to approve. All right. Thank you, Mr. P. Mr. Turner, for the discussion. The ones with 50,000 have rescue units? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Same as last year for the ones, except the one that's coming out. All those in favor mm -hmm. say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Building codes. Mr. Jones, welcome. Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman, Commissioners. You're enjoying the meeting thus far? Uh, so far. <laughs> <laughs> so far. <laughs> Some fortunate to be on the last year. <laughs> okay, recommendation is eight hundred eighty thousand eighty-five dollars, and you can see that Mr. Jones initially requested two additional uh, positions, line item one hundred six, which I am not recommending, so that's staying the same. So there are no changes personnel-wise. There's a little bit of change in health insurances as has been the case in about all of our budgets, and uh, communications up about $3,000. There are a few other minor changes that I've tweaked down a little bit, as you can look down through there, nothing of <coughs> any real significance. And since we're not hiring two people, no new vehicles. And uh, so that's my recommendation. Mr. Jones, what did you do to irritate the mayor? Well, I don't know. <laughs> well we, we negotiated a little bit on, on my budget, and I think the computers and data processing equipment that we have um, added this year will uh, put laptops in each truck and will help our workload. Um, you lost an employer or two during the downturn. Are we back we're, to our pre downturn staffing? No, we're down three people. We're still. down three from like 06, 07, something yeah. like that. We're going to have to address this at some point in time. Your department handles all the final inspections on the properties and right. new construction and everything. We we collect all the development tax. We uh, do zoning enforcement, property standards. We do all the building, uh, residential, and commercial inspection. Kevin's always complaining. The yard's too tall. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's that time of year again. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, we, we take care every, of all, it's all a big property. Umbrella. Right. It's a big right. umbrella. Right. Don't you do accept the mayor's recommendation? I do. Right. Motion approved. Thank you, Commissioner Jernigan. Second, yeah. Commissioner Petty. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Ambulance service. Okay. I believe we've got somebody besides Mr. Nunley tonight. He's out of town, so. Well, <coughs> tab five. The estimated revenue for this fund is ten million, about ten million six hundred thousand. Uh, expenditures at twelve million two hundred fourteen two forty nine. The initial salary survey was at three hundred sixty five thousand, which is causing uh, some difficulty. Um, this budget that's presented ends with a deficit fund balance, so there needs to be some adjustments. I'll remind you that when we set this up, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember now the year, but we have taken pennies away from this fund to help in years that we did not want to do a tax increase. But we don't have a policy on this budget as we far don't. as a bare minimum. We, really. we don't. We don't, but I will say that we do need to some we cannot have a negative. A negative number cannot be. That's a projection. We can't project we can't, a negative. We, we can't project those appropriations. They have to. The fund balance has to be positive. I think Project. conservative, but conservative budgeting, which I say all the time, we're projecting <laughs> revenue as low as it could possibly be, and we're, well, and we're well, and say, projecting expenditures as high as they could possibly be. So that well, negative number may not actually be a negative number. But it's on so paper, and that's what the comptroller is going to look at. Right. And, and really, there's not a whole lot of 
you can see what the revenue sources are. There's not a whole lot of, in the general fund, you have a, over 100 different revenue sources. You really don't have that in this fund. We've you got have property tax and the The $600,000 increase projected in revenue this coming year, which is maybe optimistic. What do you think about that, Ms. Michotto? I think it may be a little optimistic. But anyway, that's what that's our best estimate at this mm -hmm. moment. What's the three three hundred sixty four thousand dollars salary study again? That that was our first pass at um, if we made changes for the, that, for the salary a, study. You're estimating the change. That was at that point, and that's what we'll be working. Those, that number is not in these uh, expense numbers. Oh, they're not. It would no. be additive. Votes approved. Mr. Jernigan. I'll give the second for discussion. I'm I'm not ready yet, but second. I thank you, Mr. Commissioner P. But there are there are not any. This is the same positions that they currently have, and it's just a, a normal step increase. And and we have been budgeting deficits every year the last couple of years, which is why we've driven down the fund balance. We just can't afford to do it again next year. Is included in this a couple of a new ambulance or something like that? It's three, three. Yeah, there's four hundred three thousand, but we uh. This, this is about the pace that we should keep to be sure our ambulances are staying in good condition. You know how many calls we're having and they need to roll when, they, uh, when the calls come. Could we not cut that number and fund them to later on if revenues come in better than projected or if we could reach out to Christy Houston again or a development tax or something? With development tax we certainly could. Uh, development, well, yeah, I'm not trying to avoid, how many times can we spend gonna, that, though? Yeah, I'm not trying to avoid endorsing a 3.13 tax yeah. increase right now. Well, again, we could couple this with with the one we just previously talked about, and uh, we could suggest how we might fund the revenue, where the revenue might come from before we come back. And we'll have to do that. <coughs> We could approve this budget as presented tonight and then still have another chance to look at revenue projection to see if we need to do yes. something. Oh, yeah. We don't. Nothing on, this, nothing on this budget can be cut except if you just choose not to purchase any new ambulances. Could we buy one of the three? Oh, we can buy one. Oh, I'm just saying in balance, and we've got a deficit <coughs> of uh, 230000 We could certainly do that. I, I don't know if that's wise. And you... Hear Mr. Nunley's report on how many calls that we're making and they're going up every month. And just bring your attention back to this front cover page. We adopted the budget out of balance the current year of 1.9, and we've amended. So at the time I did this in May, we are we're going down two million dollars. Now we're not going to ultimately in down at $2 million because we'll have some. we will not spend everything we, we have. Everything. And this is on a budgetary basis. And this might improve once we do our revenue estimates. So would, would you change that before June 29th, whatever the date is? Absolutely. So there we'll may be. We'll do our revenue estimates. Mm -hmm. and, we'll and have to get with them on, on. But again, it's not a whole lot of sources of revenue mm -hmm. that. That's that not going to work, but I'm saying, well, Will the fund balance potentially change? Improve. It, it will improve, possibly. Melanie, you know about what? Because she does look at that mm -hmm. on how much you're going to project. Well, no, oh, on the okay. preparations, what you expect to turn back. Oh, we'll yes. get with that. Yes. Which will improve this beginning balance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but ultimately, there's going to be a problem. At some point, this fund needs property tax. But we, we have to take away from it. We may have to give it back. We haven't taken three cents out of their property tax. Have we? 
this when we first did this, it was nine cents. This year, but no, no, and it was years. nine cents, wasn't it? When we first well. did it, it was almost ten cents. It's down to five point six. Well, reappraisals have. I mean, the reappraisal has changed. The reappraisal yeah. certified rates have dropped that down. We have taken from side. this and driven the balance but down. We got to look at. Uh, we, we've gone to that collection agency, and uh, it's showing this year we're going to be down by four hundred thousand or so on the collections this year, even though we had more calls this year than we did last year. That's it. 2014, patient charges mm -hmm. 65, six and a half million. We get That's roughly 500,000 a month. And uh, it's and a little over. And we're budgeting 6, six, seven, six point I, seven. I don't think we've time. ever gotten that much since we went to this system, have we? What, 6.7? Yeah. That's why I think no. she's saying. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That, that well, when we first separated this out, we decided for the year end that we had over budgeted because we went in blind, not knowing what it was going to take. So Did we pulled take? some money out because we were feeling our way along in the dark, basically. Right. And so it's not like we've been robbing, let's, let's just take it from them. We, we've just been trying to figure out exactly where it ought to be budgeted. Personally, I think I can vote for this, but I'm going to keep a list when we get to set a tax rate of things that can go, and one or two of those ambulances are going to be on my list, you know, and along with several other things. But the only thing that's increased other than the step and the insurance costs are the three ambulances. Oh, we, had, we had three ambulances, two ambulances last year, right? In 15. Well, her, her conservative estimate on money to not spend is about 300000 What's the average cost of those ambulances? You know, 125, something like that, or a little bit more than that, I think. Yeah. It's 115, five plus the equipment. Yeah. Okay. So about three or four. And then we're requesting one more. Three or four sheriff's trucks. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We have a motion to approve and a second. Any further discussion, amendments, anything? Let's call the roll. I'll say some different looks down there. It's supposed to oh, you wake me up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Mom? Yes. Mr. Jernigan? Yes. Mr. Kaplan? Yes. Mr. P? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? No. Mr. Jordan? Yes. That's better than I thought it would. You come. We're going to bring up the school system. Mr. Sandy's still here, so we can't do that. Is there anything else? Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Is there anything else to come for us tonight? I just remind you that I just, you know, the building construction, 706, we took that out of this budget. Okay. Um, that's the replacement station that we have to build on Burton Street according to our lease that we have with respect to the pace center that we received from St. Thomas Hospital. That's $716,000. We borrowed money just for the purpose to include the building of that station. So we're being able to fund that out of the bond proceeds. This is, if you just put two ambulances in there, this budget is a continuation budget from last year. Is all, is all it is. It's all it is. Yes, sir. Yeah. So it's kind of I mean, they're, it's hard to cut in there. That narrows the option pretty quick. There have been no staffing increases here yeah. in, in years. Well, what people people are looking on the outside saying a $12 million budget will realize that 10 of that's revenue they're generating themselves. So you're basically talking about $10 million to, to run this budget. That's, it's, it's a very efficient, effective operation. Somebody wants to talk about an ambulance until they need one. Or, or a sheriff's deputy or, or a fire department. Fire you, know, you want to get shot, you want to burn, or, you know, be in a <laughs> car wreck. I mean, you got, you got agendas and public safety you got to look at. I would urge everybody to enjoy themselves tomorrow night. We'll be right back here the next night doing this all over again. Why not? Good night. Good night. Good night. Yeah. So you got a night off? We are adjourned.